today we're going to be comparing these two intake manifolds, the RPM air gap on the left and the performer RPM on the right. Now, I still hear people talk about the RPM air gap being taller than the performer RPM. Now, I'm not sure if people are still getting that confused with the base performer or if they're just looking at it on a surface like this. Now, on a surface like this, it's obvious the air gap does look taller. That's because when they designed the air gap, they lowered the bottom of the intake into the lifter valley, which on a surface like this is going to raise it up higher. But when we look at the information from Edelbrock themselves and their plenum height and everything, you can see it's the same. The only difference being is the intake runners on the RPM air gap, slightly different, but not enough to make any kind of difference whatsoever. It's probably just due from being a new cast. Now, the way I look at this is the RPM air gap is just a revamp performer RPM because once you've sold so many intake manifolds, you can only sell so many to the same people. Since you can obviously reuse an intake over and over and over again, it's very rare that you actually have to buy a new one. So people reuse their old ones most of the time. And since they're reusable, they usually sell their old ones if they're upgrading to a larger intake, etc. So, to probably to help sales, they need to revamp something, make a few changes, and call it new. Which, they're not the only company to do that. Companies have done that for years. Which brings us the RPM air gap. Now, it does have a few upgrades such as a notch divider and rear water crossovers dual distributor hold down. Now, just about every time I see an RPM air gap, I hardly ever see anyone use the rear water crossovers. I usually see them on drag cars, but they're usually running single plane intakes and all that good stuff. So, will you really use the rear water crossovers on the RPM air gap? Now let's get to the air gap itself. Now I'm still a firm believer that it's a gimmick. And I'll put a link down below of a video I did where I actually took an air gap and a non-air gap. Of course these were the big block Chevy versions. And ran them on similar engines side by side under the hood of both of them were C10s. And they came out to the same temperature in different locations of the intake. So, to me it's still a gimmick. And I'll explain why here again. Now, under the hood of most of your average street cars, anything you're going to be driving and cruising around for an extended period of time, longer than 15 minutes, whatever. Well, aluminum is really good at absorbing heat. It's a great heat sink. Most of the heat you're going to get is actually from the cylinder heads and lifter valleys, which is going to be a constant while you're driving, cruising, stop and go traffic, etc. So it's always going to be absorbing that heat from the engine as well as any other heat that is under the hood. Now, you can add a cow hood or heat extractors or whatever, but it's still aluminum. There's still the same aluminum, so they're still going to dissipate heat the same. You're still going to get heat dissipation from this intake as you would this intake. And then as far as the cool air that is going to be coming through the air gap and releasing that hot air, as they say, most of that air is actually going to come through the radiator, which is not cool air at all. And if it does do anything, it's really honestly not going to be enough to make a difference at all. Now we can go back and hear about things we've heard before when these came out and people did dyno tests on them. And most people know the videos we've seen where the RPM air gap on a small block Chevy such as these made 7 more horsepower than the non-air gap. 
Now, if you continue watching that video, you notice that they noticed the notch divider, so they took the non-air gap, took it to the lathe, and exactly notched it the same way as it was here. And when they did that and re the non-air gap, they were actually to match the power of the air gap identically. So, one, air gap didn't make enough of a difference on a cooler, denser air fuel charge to make any more power than the non-air gap. And also, the only difference to make the horsepower was the notch divider, which we know that does help an engine at higher RPMs. Now, when you look at the heat crossover, a lot of people will talk about that and how it heats up your air and fuel charge. But when you think of it on your average street car, if you're over 2,000 RPM or even on a dyno over 2,000 RPM and higher, your air and fuel is flowing through the runners and putting them so fast, it's not getting heated up by the crossover and it's not really even touching the bottom of the plenum so you don't even have to worry about it there either. Now Hot Rod also did a test with the big block Chevy as a test mule 460 cubic inch 10 to 1 compression the RPM Extreme oval port heads comp cams 242 248 at 50 thousandths hydraulic roller cam and a Holly 1000 CFM HP series carburetor. And the results were with the air gap at 6200 RPM, it made 603 horsepower. With the non air gap it, at 6200 RPM, it made 599 horsepower. On that caliper of engine, 4 horsepower is not really that big of a difference. In retrospect, yeah, it's four horsepower, but that big of an engine, that big of a carburetor, it's not really that much of a difference. And they even state that they suspect the cooling effect doesn't make a lot of difference. So, which, honestly, all the information for, it's not really going to make enough difference. But, Unless you do something and use the air gap to your advantage from an old school trick. If you know you're going to be running someone or you're at the drag strip and you do want a cooler, denser air fuel charge, the air gap does provide a space underneath where you can shove ice, ice packs, something under there to actually cool your air and fuel charge. And, you know, that could probably help you. But if you're wanting a cooler air fuel charge all the time, honestly, you're better off getting a phenolic spacer and a heat insulator gasket. And that's going to benefit you a lot more. And honestly, it's a lot cheaper and easier to install a spacer and a gasket than it would be to swap from this intake to that intake. Especially given the price difference. You can also notch this one yourself and get the same amount of power. And if you do need rear water crossover, I have actually seen people and know people that have taken this out right here and made their own rear water crossover. And that's nothing new either. And honestly, neither is notching divider. Very old school techniques been done for a very long time so if you already have the performer rpm and you want rear water crossovers or you want a notch divider if you're capable of doing it yourself and you already have this intake like i said it's just worth doing the stuff to this one and if you want a cooler denser air fuel charge adding the phenolic spacer is obviously going to help a lot and from a price wise retrospect their gap is more expensive 
and if you're looking at them used, usually you can find the Performer RPM cheaper and easier than you can the RPM air gap. Usually people want more for the RPM air gap, and people do sell them less. And I'm not saying that the RPM air gap is not a good intake. It is a good intake. And honestly, you know what? They do look a lot better than the older ones. They just look meaner on an engine for sure with that air gap design. But like I said, you can get the same out of Performer RPM as you can in air gap. And... Let's be honest, you can get the same out of the Performer RPM cheaper, especially if you already have one, compared, compared to spending the money on a new air gap, or even finding a used air gap and spending the money on it. So, it comes down to skill level of either being able to notch this divider, or if you want rear water, being able to do that. Of course having an RPM already and swapping over that's work too so you just gotta look at it from those point of views and the price of a new RPM versus the price of a former RPM air gap well you'll have to be the judge on that for yourself if you want to spend that extra money now I hope you enjoyed this video as always thanks for watching